Hey everyone, and welcome back to Oasis Church Real Life Diaries. I'm here with Hannah Whitson, and Hannah, it's good to have you. Thanks, Pastor Bob. And you have been, it's kind of like going through a big fire, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it started a few months ago, and so um, I got you here, and I know that your testimony is gonna be able to encourage other people. Um, so why don't you just share with us? Well, uh, the other, week when Augie was sharing about Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and just talking about how we are not guaranteed to be spared from the fire, mm -hmm. but that God will walk through, through the fire with us. Right. And that just really holds true for us uh, during this coronavirus time. You know, it's been many ups and downs, but um, on April 24th, my dad had a cardiac arrest mm -hmm. and I happened to be at home and my mom called me and I lived three houses down from my parents so I ran down and my dad was passed out and unconscious on the floor mm -hmm. and not breathing and so at that point my mom was online or on the phone with 911 and uh, she they instructed her to start CPR so thankfully, John was there like a minute later and took over CPR. And, you know, I just tried to help roll him over and just praying the whole time. And I just really felt like, God, this could be it. Mm -hmm. You know, this could be the last time that I see my dad alive. Mm -hmm. And um, and yet I, I knew in my heart, my dad's been telling me for years, he's ready to go home whenever mm -hmm. Jesus calls him home. Right. And so, you know, peace yet sadness and so i'm just praying god do do your will in this situation and so we uh, uh you know shortly after we called 911 the fire engine mm -hmm. has showed up we, they resume cpr and take over john was never so thankful to see his fire department guys oh, there sure. and all yeah. of their equipment yeah. and um they get him loaded up and put him in the ambulance and at this point you know, we just don't know if he's going to live or die. Mm -hmm. They take him to the hospital, but because of coronavirus, we were not allowed in. Right. And we're getting ready for dinner as the whole family and just kind of waiting. And we get a, another call from the hospital and they just said, his condition has changed and you need to come now. Mm -hmm. As I'm going up to where he's at in the hospital, there's a whole team of doctors in with him. And he had been having cardiac episodes where his heart rate was going abnormal. And, it, you know, it's not compatible with life. So they would shock him. Well, he had been shocked about eight times wow. uh, that, that day. And they wheeled him off almost as soon as I got there. And just got to tell him I loved him. And... Mm -hmm. You know, Micah and Elizabeth, my brother and sister, were there and that we all loved him and were praying. I, I go home that night still just uncertain as to what God's going to do. And just in my heart, just trying to pray that God's going to do his will. Mm -hmm. Because if my dad lives, that you know, that's our desire because we love him. Sure. Uh, if he dies, he goes home to be with Jesus. And then there's going to be something that he he has planned in that you know I, I really feel like one of my life verses is Romans eight twenty eight, right and just you know he's going to work everything for good for those who have been called according to his purpose mm -hmm. and if this is his purpose that my dad die then I was trying to prepare myself for it and I what came to mind was of the Israelites when they were crossing the Jordan River in Joshua 4 and God tells them to get these remembrance stones right. to remind us of what God did there. Mm -hmm. And so I figuratively felt like I needed to get these remembrance stones. So I started just recalling God's faithfulness mm -hmm. through, you know, through difficult times when the outcome was not what we wanted. But, you know, God showed up and carried us through it. And, you know, we wake up the next day, still not sure what's going right. to, you know, what's going to happen. Um, he seemed to be relatively stable over the night. So we go check in with my mom and sister. They had been able to talk to him that morning. And my dad's first words were, could you bring me my Bible? Mm -hmm. I'd, li I'd like my Bible and my phone. So they were packing him a little case and get just about ready to leave to the hospital to drop that off. And as they're... Just heading out the door, we get another call from the hospital, 
and he's had more cardiac episodes mm. and they had to shock him another six times mm. and they were calling for permission at that point then to intubate him and they said we need to fly him to phoenix so it's just you know it was just this up and down roller coaster of uh, you know, whatever God's will is, we're okay. <laughs> right. We're going right. to be okay. But uh, it, it was uncertainty. And, but yet God, God was with us. He was faithful. Mm -hmm. But every day he seemed to do just a little better. Mm -hmm. And they, they left him sedated for four days. And then they, um, they were able to start, uh, they were able to put a pacemaker mm -hmm. in. And so they called it the Cadillac of pacemakers, and he just has progressively gotten better. We, you know, we just really felt God answering our prayers through just the little things. We were worried because we couldn't be there with him in the hospital that he would become agitated. He had the, you know, he was intubated right, with the right. tube down his throat, and and so, you know, we just started sending out, you know, pray that he stays calm. And every time we check in with the nurse, they're like, oh, he's really calm. He's doing really mm -hmm. well. He, it was just God showing up mm -hmm. and, um, and, and being faithful and, and walking through it with us. Yeah. And so we're just, we're really thankful. After that, he was able to, uh, he was really only in the hospital in, in Phoenix for about a week. Right. And then he was at the rehab hospital here for another week and a half. We were, once again, couldn't go in and see him, but we would stand outside his windows and we would bring him coffees. So don't tell anyone, that, but we, we would get him some coffee and, um, and just, we've had that blessing to be able to have more time with him. So we don't, you know, he is now at home and it's, uh, it's been over, just over two months now. Right. But God's been faithful. <laughs> every step of the way. So, Hannah, that's quite an ordeal, of course, and um, I appreciate you sharing that with me, but if there was one lesson, mom, um, you know, <laughs> daughter, um, that God was teaching you through all of this, what would that one lesson be? Uh, we can trust God no matter what the outcome is. Wow. I, um, you know, I know we've, we've talked before, but we, um, John and I lost a, a little baby, mm -hmm. a, a baby boy. His name was Joshua. And um, on June 17th, it was 14 years since his oh. passing. And we, both John and I have just found that no matter what the circumstance, we, we can always say God is good. And it's, he's faithful. He's there with us. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. Right. And um, through this circumstance, you know, it's been another just, really challenging circumstance but we're we're hoping ex and waiting expectantly God's going to use this you know our ultimate goal in in this life is that God be God get the glory yeah. and so we're we're waiting to see how, and we may not even see on this side of heaven how right. God is exactly exactly going to use it but uh God's faithful so if there was one thing that you could encourage someone else that's going through the fire right now, um, what would it be? Uh, turn to God. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's going to show up. He's going to be there with you. And, you know, and, and, and we've been so blessed. We have family. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and my prayer is that other people have that family that right. can come around them. And, but even if they don't, it, you know, God can provide that family. Right. Well, we certainly love the Whitson family, and mm -hmm. we're so we're really just so thrilled that um, in your fire, um, God showed up really strong, and you guys were able to rely upon Him and trust Him um, during this whole ordeal. And I'm so glad um, that you have some time with your dad left and to be able to <laughs> um, just to love on him some more. And I appreciate you sharing your story. I do. I really do. I think it's going to encourage a lot of people. And if it's okay with you, can I pray with you? Yes. Um, God, again, thank you for the fires. Um, Lord, the, the trials, the tribulations in our lives that we find ourselves in. And God, I, I so much just praise you that during the Whitsons um, fire, Lord, you were right there beside them uh, with this family. And they were able to lean hard into you and to be able to trust you um, during this time. God, we're grateful 
um, for the Whitsons, um, dad and grandpa to be on the mend and, and doing better today. And we give you all that praise, Father. But I thank you again for um, Hannah and John and their family and their love of you. God, thank you that they are so faithful to you. And I am so grateful, Father, that you showed yourself strong in their life. God, it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you really enjoyed um, Hannah's story. Um, it, again, is an encouragement to my life, and I pray that it'll be an encouragement to yours. So, again, Hannah, thank you for an edition of, you know, Oasis Church Real Life Diaries. All right. Thank you, Pastor Bob. All right.